One of Tennessee's most precious and beautiful resources is our abundance of majestic trees. Breathtaking to look at and a shame to see go to waste. Brandon Cohen found a father and son wood carving team in Murfreesboro that's turning abandoned wood into one of a kind pieces of art. On this peaceful farm in Rutherford County, you will find two generations of master craftsmen. Tucked away in this rustic workshop, Tom Cale and his son Anthony are quite literally turning abandoned or fallen trees into works of beautiful art. One of Tom Cale's earliest memories is working with his own father, an Italian immigrant, who taught him the meticulous craft of woodworking. I look back, the biggest thing I can remember is when I was probably six or seven years old, my father was helping me to build a doghouse. Couldn't wait for him to get home to go to the next step working on the doghouse. And ever since then, it's just been in my blood, always using my hands to do whatever. And the talent runs in Anthony's blood as well. If I'd see him carving or whatnot, I'd pick up a piece of wood and just start whittling. Whether I was making something or not, I, I really don't know, but you know, I just thought I was doing good, so following his footsteps and trying to make something out of nothing. Pick up, like I said, old crates or whatever, and then they join in as if they could hold a hammer, they could pound nails to pull, pull them out of the wood, and that's where basically it all started. With a shared love of working with wood and working together, the dynamic duo have turned their attentions and sharpened their skills, making more artistic works, like intricately carved bowls, platters, and decorative pieces. At first it might give you an idea of what you're looking for, but then as you are working on it, all of a sudden it'll start revealing certain things and it gets you to kind of shift to go in the direction that it's pulling. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it just doesn't. And these masterpieces aren't just beautiful to look at. When carved by true craftsmen, tighter grains of wood can be shaped into handmade pieces that are food safe and usable. To have a bowl that you can eat a salad out of or soup or cereal or oatmeal or whatever out of is, to me it's more personal. It's just the, the feel of the, eating out of a wooden bowl and off of a wooden plate. It's so much more, I guess you could say, it's just a warm feeling, you know, just more back to the old days. Now here in the woodworking shop, they can make almost anything, but the one thing they don't use is paint or stain. That's because the Kales believe in letting the natural color of the wood shine through. Look at this cup made entirely of box elder wood. The brilliant reds almost make it look marbled, but in fact, it is nature's palette. And with a deep respect for the majestic beauty of Mother Nature's bounty, there is another thing the Kales don't do, and that's cut down trees to create their art. I hate to take a, a beautiful living tree just to create something like that when there's so much waste out there. There's so much that's being thrown to the wayside and just being wasted in general that it's, a, it's just a pity to cut trees down that are alive. So I'd rather use things that are available and such as when Anthony and I will walk through the woods and we'll see pieces that are on the ground and if it looks like there's something that we think is interesting within it, then we take it with us. Most of the kale's raw materials come from Rutherford County, like hackberry, walnut, box elder, mulberry, ash, oak, and more. And they will spend hours turning, shaping, sanding, and perfecting their pieces. Even many of the tools that they use to hone their craft are handmade, vintage, and once owned by other craftsmen. And Tom Kale believes they hold secrets and talents of their own. It's all hand tools, old tools that I can find that are still functional rather than just hang them on a wall and look at them. I like to be able to utilize them. I have some hand planes that are made back in the 1800s and when you hold the actual handle, you can feel the shape from the person that obviously owned it ahead of me 
because you can actually feel their hand where they had, had grasped it. And so those things are still functional and they've got a lot of history behind them and plus they know what they're doing. You just guide them. And the Kales don't just spend their time whittling away. After all, they are on a working farm and under the watchful eyes of Horace and Doris. Come on, it's low calorie, come on. Father and son find it peaceful and relaxing doing what they love to do. That is most of the time. 99.99% of the time. There's that little percentage that, you know, you'll get aggravated at something where the wood just doesn't want to cooperate with you. Everything you try to do, it just, you think you want to make this out of it and it's trying to tell you, no, that's not what I want to be. And then you just, you just get aggravated. So you have to walk away, just kind of take a breath and reassess the situation and come back at it when your blood pressure's lower. <laughs> I got to finish sanding it by hand because and the flow seems to come natural to father and to son. Whether it is in his genes or his years of observation, the younger Kale's admiration for his father is obvious. Very fortunate. There are many people out there that don't have or the luxury that I have to have someone that has taught me the things that I know. If it wasn't for him, I doubt I'd be doing what I'm doing. And the feeling is mutual. It's just kind of followed, you know, in my footsteps. However, I truly believe he's passed me because of his expertise. I have no words for it. I'm so proud of it. As long as it stays with him and he gets uh, such satisfaction out of it the way I've been all my life, and that's exactly what I'd say I'm looking for.